Hollow Knight is one of the prettiest 2D games of all time. Let's dive in and take a look at what makes the art in Hollow Knight so special. Afterwards, I think it will be pretty clear how Hollow Knight became such a standout game in an industry oversaturated by nearly 10,000 video game releases per year. Thank you Steam for diligently curating the games accepted onto your platform. Let's first break down the artwork into five categories. Listed on the bottom left hand side of the screen will be art style, environment art, character art, animations, foreground elements, and background elements. Let's first start by discussing the crown jewel of Hollow Knight, the art style. Every piece of art in a video game stems from the stylized art choices the developers decide upon. Hollow Knight created an art style that is very friendly to the eye. The style is similar to a lot of cartoons that you would fall in love with as a kid. Many of the insects have round body parts, making the creatures relatively easy to draw and animate. Another key aspect to pay attention to are the color choices used for the enemies and NPCs. The colors of these bugs are usually a nice mix. One of the design choices of the developers was to use full colors only, meaning that the bugs could be a number of different colors, but they would not blend any of the colors into one another. Instead, the different colors are separated by black lines representing different body parts or pieces of armor. This design choice would allow the developers to save a ton of time while creating the inhabitants of the world, the environments, and the characters. Every environment that you venture into has a very distinct feel and theme that is adhered to. Here is a quick look between all of the different environments, starting with the Forgotten Crossroads. Now that we have taken a good look at all of the different zones in Hollow Knight, let's double back to the fungal waste. In this zone you will notice that the background elements are almost exclusively mushrooms. Most of the foreground elements also happen to be mushrooms. Hell, even most of the enemies in this location are mushrooms. The developers even made the fungal waste contain pools of acidic water to further hammer down the point that fungi like to grow in damp environments. The theme that each zone presents is stuck to like white on rice. Okay, one more example. Let's go to the Crystal Caves. Notice anything particular about this location? What jumps out at you? It can't be that half the level is made out of freaky crystals, is it? 
Yes, once again the developers took the theme of an area and made it the centerpiece of the entire zone. You have enemies that have crystals on their bodies, enemies who are harvesting crystals, crystals that will hurt you if you fall on them, crystals that will... Okay, I'll stop. You get the point. Now I'll just shut up and show you some more awesome scenes from this zone. Remember guys, I appreciate the view and if you're enjoying the video, smash that subscribe button. Now let's get into the character art. The characters of Hollow Knight are unique to say the least. The bugs that many of the enemies are based off of have been reimagined to fit the art and playstyle of these masterpieces. Some of the creatures have been created from scratch, while others are simple augmentations of their real life counterparts. Drawn in a stylized manner that we have all come to love. Take a look at the enemies presented in this game. The diversity of insects and creatures stops the combat from becoming stale. Luckily for Team Cherry, there are millions of species of bugs out there, so they will not have any problem keeping any sequels jam-packed with new insects. Which is great news for us because we love all of their different creature designs anyways. The bugs range in strengths and abilities, oftentimes having their attack behaviors influenced from the insect's capabilities in real life. Insert enemy fighting montage now. The NPC designs are oftentimes derived from the bugs that they are portraying. The primary difference from the NPCs and the enemy designs are based heavily around their clothing and armor. Many of the NPCs can be sporting all kinds of weapons and armor sets. In the Spirit's Glade, many of the NPCs can be seen with all kinds of fantastic weaponry and armor, each created custom to the persona of each individual bug. That is the major distinguishing feature between an enemy and an NPC. The persona that they give to the bug designs how the bug outfits himself in the world, just as we would in ours. The narrative of the creatures, while not the primary focus of this video, grants the feeling of immersion. You want to keep playing because the world around you is alive. The NPCs have feelings and desires, and their personal attire shows it without even having to talk to them. I want to focus on animation. The vast majority of animations in Hollow Knight are executed at an extremely high level. Each animation has been created on a frame-by-frame -frame basis to flow in and out of one another smoothly. The brilliance of it all is the complexity of the animations are really kept to a minimum. Let's take a look at the swinging of the nail from our hero. 
The hero dips his head a little bit, and a blur of the nail is flung in front of our character. The developers in this instance did not animate the player's hand or the nail, only showing the blur from the weapon being swung very quickly. This sounds awful when you spell it out the way I just did, but when watching it in action during gameplay, it totally works. They kept the animation extremely bare bones and it allowed them to focus on other areas of the game. Yet, not all animations were constructed so efficiently. The Super Dash acquired from the Crystal Heart is a rather intricate animation. It has the player crouch down to show him powering up, then has crystals form underfoot to show the player a charge meter organically. After the charge button is released, the player is shot at an exceptional speed horizontally in the direction the player is facing, with a blast wave coming out behind him. After all of this has occurred, there are two exiting transitions that can happen. One transition is caused by slamming into a wall, and the other is by canceling the super dash in mid-flight. This one animation has four phases to it, and the final phase is an adjustable phase, depending on whether our hero collides with a wall or if the super dash is cancelled. Thus, making the amount of work for the developers not four transitional phases, but five possible transitional phases, all for one animation. But the thing I want to focus on is how well executed the animation was. If we break it down to a frame by frame basis, we can see how well the developers did with their sprite work. They literally stared at this frame by frame and made sure this was perfect before releasing this to the public. That is what a good game developer does. He is meticulous about his craft and wants people to feel the emotion that he is trying to convey through the actions that occur in the game. Okay, we took a solid look at the player, but I think it is time to see if the boss fight animations are impressive too. The quick answer is yes. Just like the Super Dash ability, many of the boss fight animations are dynamic animations that require careful frame by frame drawings in order to be perfected. Take a look at this highlight reel of boss fight animations. Ha! Not convinced yet? Let's dive into the background and foreground elements used in Hollow Knight. When you create a game in a 2D environment, the world is presented to the player in layers. Each layer is given a sorting order to determine which image goes on top of one another. The bottommost image, the image that everything else lays in front of, is referred to as a background element. The topmost image, the image that lays on everything else, is referred to as a foreground element. 
The foreground elements in conjunction with the background elements will give the player the sensation that the player is in a 3D environment because there are images both in front of and behind the player. What this does for the player is make them feel like they are in a world that has its own life and rules that need to be adhered to. Now, just because you have a foreground and background elements in your game, that doesn't mean that you've hit the nail on the head. The genius of Hollow Knight comes from staying on theme within the environment. Take a look at Deep Nest. The foreground elements are literally spiderwebs making you feel like you are constantly in a trap. Wait, hold up, hold up. So are the background elements. Many of the foreground and background elements in this zone are literally bodies of other creatures that you have fought throughout your travels giving the player a sense of dread because the message has been received. This area is going to be tougher than the previous zones. Certain enemies even show their foreground shadows before their sprites are rendered on screen. You know something is coming, but the exact moment is held in suspense until the animation has been completed. The amount of thought that went into something that 90% of players take for granted is the reason that the reviews from tens of thousands of people land in the 90-95% to 95 positive range on Steam. As of today, Hollow Knight has sold over 2.8 million copies. If you think I missed anything in this Hollow Knight art review, please feel free to leave a comment below. As always, I appreciate the view and if you're enjoying the video, smash that subscribe button. That's it for now.